Hello and welcome to the Wicker Library. My name is Aaliyah, so happy to have you here with us today. This week's video, I want to do a reading vlog. I love a good reading vlog. I love setting aside a week to read very specific things or try and experiment with my reading. But for this week, I want to be reading only books that were adapted into Studio Ghibli films. And I'm going to also be using it as an excuse to re-watch a bunch of Studio Ghibli films. And I'm really excited. I have a few books that I own that I know were adapted or really inspired Miyazaki specifically in creating his films. But I also have a few that are on their way from the library. So without further ado, let's get into the TBR because I'm so excited to read these books and I just want to start already. And we are going to be starting with Kiki's Delivery Service. This book is written by Aiko Kodono and it is translated from Japanese by Emily Balestiri. And it's a beautifully illustrated middle grade story following Kiki, who is a young witch who is going out on her own for the first time and she starts a delivery service with her cat, Gigi. And this is one of my favorite films of all time and I only recently discovered that it was a book first and just look at this cover. I saw it in the UK while I was over there and I knew I had to snatch it up. So I am going to be reading this first and I'm probably going to be reading this very quickly. It's not very long and it is a children's book so I'm just so excited. I think this is going to be very warm and comforting and then I'm going to be re-watching Kiki's Delivery Service right after this. The next book that I have on my TBR that I do own is How Do You Live? by Genzaburo Yoshino, and this one is translated as well, and it is translated by Bruno Navoski, and I'm very excited to read this. I hear it was more of an inspiration for The Boy Meharan, the recent Miyazaki film, and I know it's going to be rather sad. I think it is a older book. I think it was published in the 1930s and yeah i'm i'm really excited to get into this i think it's going to be a bit sadder a bit slower paced so i'm not going to start off the vlog with it but i'm definitely going to read it and then i'm going to be re-watching the boy and the heron finally i watched that when it first came out and absolutely adored it and it's a movie that you finish and really want to re-watch because you're going to be able to pick up so many things that you didn't the first time watching so i'm really excited to have that excuse to re-watch it the other two books that i want to read are from the library the first one is the borrowers the borrowers is a story about these little people who are living in this human house borrowing all these different things and it was the inspiration for The Secret Life of Arietti and I'm really excited to read it. I'm really excited to rewatch Arietti and yeah so that one I have the ebook of already so I will be getting into that at one point this week. And the final book I want to read and I also forgot the author of it because it's not in front of me right here is The House with Chicken Legs I think is the title. And this I'm going to be reading instead of the book Howl's Moving Castle because I've already read Howl's Moving Castle. I thought it was fine. I would one day want to reread it, but I don't really want to reread it for this vlog. But I saw the cover for the house with chicken legs and it reminded me so much of Howl's Moving Castle and it's this middle grade story about some sorcery and these other worlds and this house with chicken legs and I thought it was a perfect substitute for Howl's Moving Castle so that I can rewatch Howl's Moving Castle the film. So yeah, those are the four books that I'm going to be trying my hardest to read this week. They're all rather short and they're all children's stories, middle grade fiction, so I'm hoping I'll be able to get to all four. If I don't, boo hoo. <laughs> but yeah, let's get into 
the vlog and I will update you again when I've either made some progress or finished Kiki's delivery service. Hello, so we are back with some updates. I finished Kiki's delivery service this morning. It was so enjoyable, it was very charming, and surprisingly true to the movie, or I guess the movie was rather true to the book. The book did have a lot of additional scenes in the second half that weren't in the movie, and similarly there were elements of the movie such as the blimp, and a little more of some of Kiki's deliveries that she makes aren't in the book and then vice versa. There is a lot of content in this that you don't see in the movie, but I will say I did enjoy the movie more. I think Studio Ghibli films are often a rare example of sometimes enjoying a film better than the book, but this was still very enjoyable. And if you are an enjoyer of Kiki's Delivery Service, the film, I highly recommend checking this out. The illustrations were also really endearing, really wonderful. And not only is the story very similar and very charming, again, and endearing and enjoyable, but the characters are rather true to the way they're portrayed in the film. And I will say one thing that kept me from, I think, enjoying this as much as the film was the way that the characters reappear in the film. I think there is more of a continuity with, you know, characters coming back and relationships actually being formed over time. And there was much more a sono in the movie than in the book. And some things like that I just enjoyed more in the film. And also the animation was just what's not to love about that. But I do want to rewatch that film probably tonight. I think I'm going to cozy up and enjoy that rewatch, but one book down, I did go to the library to pick up the other books that I'm planning to read alongside one book that I just want to read in general that isn't connected to this vlog, but I will share with you. Before I do that though, I do want to share that I am reading How Do You Live Now? Oh my goodness. I'm I think 40 pages in? Yeah, 44 pages into this. I'm loving it so much. I just really enjoy the tone of this. It is rather serious and reflective, but I don't know, there is something just so intriguing about this story, and the story has just grabbed me, and the characters are already so warm, and I'm just so intrigued by all of their dynamics with one another, and there's going to be a lot of familial dynamics, specifically between this young boy and his great uncle, technically, I think. And yeah, it's just my cup of tea so far. It's so much fun. Fun isn't necessarily the right word for it, but it's very readable. It is very enjoyable so far. And I started it at the library, which was really nice. I liked sitting down in one of the comfy sofas that they have in the reading room and just reading for an hour or two. But as for the books I got, I got, I picked up three books while at the library. The first one is The House with Chicken Legs. This cover is the US cover and I'm not personally a fan of it. I really prefer the UK cover of it, but it's fine. I am really excited about this. It is a story that follows a 
girl who is the granddaughter, I believe, of Baba Yaga. That's all I need to know, and I think it's going to hopefully give a little bit of the whimsy and magic that Howl's Moving Castle had. Do note that this has nothing to do with Howl's Moving Castle. I don't even know for sure if it was inspired or anything like that. I think it's completely separate, but I figured I would read it for this video because I wanted to read it anyway. The next book I got I already talked about as well, but it is The Borrowers and this inspired Arietti. I had the Kindle edition of it, but it has illustrations and I just, I really wanted to read it physically, so I picked it up because it was already at the library. They had a copy. Yeah, I'm really excited about this one. I think it's going to be quick. I might pick it up at the same time as reading How Do You Live, just because How Do You Live is very slow and melodical, and I think this would be a different pace if I want to quicken the pace. The final book I picked up has nothing to do with this vlog. I don't even think I'll be reading it in this vlog, but it is the first volume of Delicious in Dungeon by Ryoko Kui, and this I recently, I keep seeing it all over Netflix because it was turned into an anime, but I had already wanted to read the manga. It's about these people who have to cook and kill these monsters in this dungeon, and there's like all these different little recipes, and the illustrations look really fun, and it just seems very cozy and a good time. So yeah, I want to read this before trying out the anime, which I hear is really good, so that hold came in today. <laughs> but those are the updates so far. Kiki's delivery service was a very nice time. I gave it three stars in the end and I would highly recommend it. I am excited to rewatch the film and yeah, I'm going to continue on with these books. So I finished The Borrowers at work today. I had a rather short shift and I was able to finish this. I started it this morning and I finished it later in the day. It was rather quick, although I will say this is a very slow paced novel and I had forgotten that when I was younger, probably around eight or nine, I did try to read this and I was bored by it and I don't think I finished it or anything like that, but I do remember this cover and picking it up when I was younger. And it, it was really interesting. It was rather charming, as you would expect something adapted into a Studio Ghibli movie. Charming seems like it would be expected, but I also think it was pretty dull. I didn't feel like the characters were very intriguing or that the plot felt tense or beautiful or cozy. I couldn't really gauge the tone of it. It felt like it was supposed to be silly at some points in the story, but it just didn't feel like it was that funny or that exciting. But the world building was really what I enjoyed and this concept of these borrowers living in the floorboards and borrowing these things and making this world for themselves. But yeah, in the end, I also gave this three stars. I did bump up my rating for Kiki's Delivery Service upon further reflection to a 3.25. I could push it to a 3.5, but I feel like 3.25 is a good point for that story because I wanted to rate this three stars because I just thought it was fine. It was not good or bad. I mean, it was good, but it just wasn't. It wasn't very memorable, and yeah, I definitely enjoy the film more than the book in this case once again, but I do want to rewatch Arietti tonight. I'm really excited. I do remember that film not being necessarily one of my favorite Studio Ghibli movies. I love it, and it has a place in my heart, but it's not one of my favorite just because I think now I'm understanding the adaptation material is just fine. You know, uh, they did add a little bit here and there in the movie, and I'm curious to really see what, if 
because I'm not remembering it very well, but it was a little bit dull, this book, and I know the movie was much slower paced and there wasn't too much happening in that movie, but overall I'm not regretting my time reading this. I am looking forward to starting The House with Chicken Legs by Sophie Anderson next. Once again, this isn't, you know, adapted or anything, but I'm going to use it as an excuse to watch Howl's Moving Castle, and I'm just excited to read this. It sounds like a fun time. It sounds like a sweet and charming time, a bit whimsical as well. So that's going to be my next read. I am also still reading How Do You Live, which I'm still really enjoying. I did realize very belatedly that The Boy and the Heron isn't out streaming yet. It's still in theaters. It's a very long theater release uh, and I don't know when it's going to be put out on streaming platforms, but hopefully I'll find a way to watch it this weekend. The book and the film already are having some similarities that I'm noticing, so I'm excited to rewatch it, but I'm also excited to finish that book. So those are the reading updates. I'm going to sit and watch Arietti at some point tonight, and I will update you all when I have some thoughts about The House with Chicken Legs. So I have a few updates for you. The first one is I have chosen to DNF this book, The House with Chicken Legs. The writing style is not my thing at all. It is incredibly repetitive. And when I say this, I want I don't want someone to be like, oh well it's a children's book, like it's going to be more repetitive. I understand that. But when the same information is being told to you several times per page and it's all things that could be shown to a child which they'd understand but could be shown and is instead told to you again and again and again that's a that's a writing thing that i don't enjoy and in this book i got about 40 pages in before i just couldn't take it anymore there is this main character and her main personality so far at least is that she wants to play with the living children and she's grown up around the dead and she just wants to make a living friend and okay that I understand that's interesting why are we told that every page every page it's like oh, in case you forgot I've never grown up around living children in case you forgot I wish I wasn't homeschooled oh I wish I could go to school things like this are just hammered over your head again and again and I couldn't take it. So I have decided to DNF this book and I have decided to do what I should have done earlier and just reread Howl's Moving Castle by Diana Wynne-Jones. I enjoyed this book the first time I read it but I read it when I was early high school and I think I'm a different reader now and I think I would actually enjoy it even more now upon a reread. So I don't know why I didn't just do this in the beginning. I think I just wanted an excuse to try that book but it did not work out for me. So I do want to pick up the audiobook of Howl's Moving Castle. I did this morning and I really enjoyed the narrator and I've been meaning to pick up an audiobook so I'm going to enjoy that. It is a very rainy day today and I have work but I have the closing shift so I have all of morning to read and technically do a little bit of homework but we'll see if I actually get around to doing that. But I did also read or I did also watch Arietti again. I love that movie. It and I realize why I like it so much more than reading The Borrowers. It's because they added these plot points that are so much more engaging and interesting. Like in The Borrowers, the, the mother never gets captured or anything, and the friendship between Arietti and the boy is much more vague and uninteresting in my opinion, and in the show it's just so beautiful. And yeah, they, they made some changes in the movie that I just love. So yeah, I really enjoyed rewatching that movie and I'm excited to continue this vlog. I have also been reading more of How Do You Live, of course. I'm like 
Okay, I'm not that far into it, but I'm reading it before bed and I have, including today, three more days of this reading blog before I want to try and have it edited and posted. So I think I'm going to be able to finish Howl's Moving Castle and this one in three days. We'll see if I manage that. But this, I don't want to jinx it, but this is feeling like a five star or at the very least a four star. It is just everything I've been wanting and needing in a book. It is very lyrical and slow moving, but it is also just so reflective and fascinating and really lovable so far. And I'm just having such a good time with it. So those are the reading updates. A DNF, but you know, it is replaced with a book I'm sure some people wanted to see me read anyway in this video. So I'm reading it now. <laughs> Hello, so we have reached the end of this video. I also just finished Howl's Moving Castle by Diana Wynne Jones, and I went back and forth on my rating and enjoyment of this book. There were so many elements I really loved. I loved Sophie's character. I think she is so relatable to me. She is one of those fictional characters that I'm just like, you army <laughs> and I really love that and I also really enjoy the tone and the humor of that book. I think I really should take that as a sign to read more from this author and there's several series of her and other books from her that just really sound up my alley and she does a lot in the cozy fantasy genre which is one of my favorite genres so I do like her writing style and her characterization a lot. I will say the plot of Howl's Moving Castle, the book, is just very difficult to stay engaged with. There is a point halfway through that I just start to lose interest in and I think it has to do with either the length of the book or something like that. But the middle always, even on my first read of this, really drags for me, but I really love the beginning of it and I really love the character dynamics and the way Sophie interacts and just interacts with the world really. And the ending I find fine. It's, you know, it's an ending <laughs> and I don't really have any thoughts about it. It is very rushed, which I know is a pretty common critique of that book. But overall, it was an enjoyable time and I would recommend the audiobook. I just think the narrator does a good job bringing that story to life. And if I wasn't listening to it on two times speed, I honestly think I may have DNF'd it at the halfway point, except I still want to give it like 3.25 stars. Similar to Kiki's Delivery Service, I felt just I really liked a lot of the elements, but as a whole, I just can't quite 
give it higher star wise so that was that book and i also re-watched howl's moving castle and that movie is just one of my favorites of all time i absolutely love howl in the ghibli version the ghiblification of howl and calcifer in that movie is just so good <laughs> and i really like their characters better in the movie than in the book but yeah sophie is great in both but howl is absolutely better in the movie and i'm obsessed with that character and that wizard but yeah a fantastic movie it is it remains on the top of my list for sure and it was nice to really cement that with a rewatch as for this book, I am almost finished with it. I am having a fantastic time. It is definitely a favorite of this vlog and I would highly recommend anyone pick it up but also fans of Studio Ghibli. This is one where I find it really fun and interesting because it's not necessarily the boy and the heron in book form such as you know Kiki's Delivery Service was definitely the most like its Studio Ghibli adaptation. This one is very clearly what inspired Miyazaki to create the boy and the heron but the boy and the heron is this very separate different story and I am really excited to rewatch it although I can't rewatch it in this vlog because it's not out on streaming yet and I did look into what it would be what it would take to go see it in theaters again and I would have to travel like an hour and a half into the city on train which is not only expensive but also very time consuming and I'd have to get like a ticket for the theater and I just I don't have that time or energy <laughs> to do that in this vlog but as soon as it comes out on streaming I will be doing a rewatch. As for the book though I think this is just a fantastic story that is a coming of age story and it is such a good friendship story and the teachings in this are really heartwarming and I just love this book. I don't know how I'm going to feel about the ending. I think the ending is really going to either push this to a five star or keep it at, you know, a four star, which it's at right now. At least that's what I'm feeling. So yeah, this is definitely the favorite of the video and I think it could be a favorite of this month as well. So that was nice to discover. And yeah, so those are my thoughts. I think if I were to really do a final discussion and unpacking of Studio Ghibli books and movies. I think Studio Ghibli is one of the few times where the majority of the movies that are inspired by books are better than the books themselves, especially in the case of The Borrowers. I didn't love that book. The more I think about it, the more it's just a very low three star on my list. It wasn't bad by any means, but Ghibli really breathed life into that story by animating it and having such great music and everything like that. In the case of Kiki's Delivery Service, I thought it was very similar to the book and I think if you enjoyed the movie you can definitely enjoy the book as well. I do still think the film was better. There's just this extra layer of charm and characterization and whimsy that these films are capable of creating. But yeah, as far as this one, I don't feel like it's fair to compare the book and the movie because this is much less of an adaptation than an inspiration, but both were still very, very good. I hope you all enjoyed, and if you stayed to the end, let me know by commenting a flower emoji, whichever flower you so choose. But yeah, uh, thank you for sticking around. If you haven't yet, like the video and subscribe if you're not already. Become a part of the Wicker Library. We have a good time here. And yeah, I will see you all in the next video.